and welcome back to the fifth and final episode of How to Be Effective Using Moodle as a Student. Uh, what we're going to be doing now is learning how to upload a large document that's too large to upload into Moodle. Um, one of the challenges is that Moodle is hosting roughly 400 courses a semester and there's at least four semesters that are being held concurrently on uh, on Moodle before their the oldest ones are archived off so that's what uh, 1600 courses and if every course had unlimited file uploads for every student um, you'd rapidly run out of um, storage on on the Moodle server and so there are file size limitations and generally most courses have a 10 megabyte uh, file size. Now that's large enough for most papers, uh, that's large enough for even most regular PowerPoints, but there are some classes that require you to um, record audio narrations in a, uh, in a PowerPoint presentation, perhaps uh, create a video, um, let's say, of a speech that you're giving, and those can often be 20 megabytes or um, 100 megabytes, sometimes close to 200 megabytes, far, far larger than the upload limitation is. So we have to find a way around that. And I remember, if I scroll back up to the top of the course and come to the Start Here page, I remember that there was mention of um, tutorials. It, it was either in this course, um, or basically every course has it, but let's come into the sample course. Uh, because this one actually, I know that I, I saw it here in the start here, that there was, yes, the help resources for students here. Okay, and here are some brief tutorials on accessing and using Moodle. But there's also some distance learning FAQs. And I think this is where I saw the question. And I'm going to click on that, and then we'll launch that. And um, I think it was down here. I'm trying to upload a file into Moodle, but it's too large. How can I get around this? So here is a step-by-step -step, a description of what to do to upload a file. And you can follow these directions, but if you're not really a textual person, if you like to actually observe it, let's go ahead and do the same thing for uh, the course that I need to upload into. So I'm going to come back to my courses. I see that I have got a one, there's a shortcut because it's due, so I'm going to click on that and get back to it so that I can do it when I need to. But I'm going to switch over to a different browser window where I am logged in to Office 365 using my uprovidence.edu account, of course. And then by following those steps in the tutorial, I realize that I can click on the waffle icon up here and I can switch from mail. Um, I would also use that to access my calendar but I want to be in my OneDrive. So clicking on that button brings me into the OneDrive, which, I'll close it now, looks something like this. I've created a sample OneDrive that's embedded in my own personal OneDrive so that I can show you what to do. Now it's currently empty. What we need to do is we need to create a folder that is shared with everyone, not everyone in the world, but everyone with a uprovidence.edu account so that we can upload large files into that folder, it'll in inherit the shared permissions, and then we'll be able to, s to get a link to those files, paste it into a container document that we can upload a one-page Word document, well, easily upload into the, mo the Moodle upload assignment. I'll get that out. So I need to create a new folder. If I don't already have a folder here in my OneDrive, I'll come up to New and Create a Folder. And this folder, I'm going to give the name Shared with Everyone. 
and I'm going to create it. There I have a new folder. Now I want you to notice when I first created it, it now says private. It is not shared with everyone. So what I have to do is change the permissions on the folder so that everything I upload into that folder is going to be shareable as well. So I come over and click on private and I'm going to be managing access to this by inviting people. Now I click on add people and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type the name everyone and see it pops up a hit everyone it, which is basically the same as everyone except external users because the U Providence Office 365 is configured that it only shares with people with the U Providence account. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to look over here and see that the default privileges are that they can edit. I don't want everyone that I send the links to to be able to edit my documents. So I'm going to restrict that to view because in order to deliver the PowerPoint I need to give view access to my professor or if I'm going to post it into a forum to my peer students in my in a discussion forum. Um, I'm also going to turn off sending the email invitation because I'm providing links in a different way within Moodle. So I uncheck that option and then I click share. It's updating and um, it says shared with everyone now has been shared. I close that notification out and I can close this panel and I know that I did it right because that now says shared. Shared. Okay, with uh, multiple little bobblehead uh, uh, silhouettes there indicating multiple people and it even shows shared here too that it's a shared with others so I'm going to turn off by hitting the little information icon there I'm going to turn off that panel and now I'm going to go into the folder click on it to go into it it's currently empty I'm going to either I could drag a folder in there or a file in there or I can upload so I'm going to use the upload button up here in this uh, this menu I'm going to click upload and I'm going to upload a file. So now I'm going to look in my documents, school, and here is the PowerPoint that I want to deliver. So I upload it. I get the message that it's uploading. Now depending on how fast your internet connection is and how large the file size was, it uh, may take a while for it to upload. I didn't do a really large file because I don't want this recording to take so terribly long. Here is the file. Here it is shared. So I've got by putting it in this shared folder it has inherited the shared permissions. Now I want you to notice when I hover over the file name a three, three dots appear and that's Microsoft OneDrive's way of telling you that there's a menu here. So if I click on that menu, I then have a pop-up window that allows me to copy the link. So if I copy the link, it loads up a link that's a unique link pointing to this file in this folder. I click the copy button. I get a green check mark saying it's good to go. All right. Now I open up a Word document and here I've got it basically it's going to be a one pager. Here I right click and I paste the link. But you know what? It doesn't look like a link, does it? I'm going to try a trick. I hit the space bar and see how it turned blue and underlined. If that for some reason doesn't happen for you you can also select it and while it's still in your clipboard you can click control K and that'll launch an option to create 
a link there. So then you paste the link in there. But since I've done it already and it is an active link, I'm going to come up and I am going to file and I'm going to save that document. Then I'm going to minimize it. I can close that. I'm going to come back into my assignment. I'm going to click to add the submission. I click File Submission. I choose the file. I um, select the upload link document that I just saved. I upload the document. It's spinning. It won't take very long because it's just a one-page Word document. It's not the whole PowerPoint. That one-page Word document contains the link to the PowerPoint. Okay? And I save the changes. Okay, I'm going to switch back over to the other browser and I'm going to open a new tab and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to Moodle and I'm going to log in as the course instructor have to remember her password. Click on her courses. There's the one that she's in. I am going to find the upload here. Oh, I think it was in this week. There it is. One submission. I'm going to click on it. as many. I view all submissions. Here is Mickey Mouse's submission. There's a document. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to have it open up in my word processor. There is the link. I'm going to click on that link and it takes me right to the PowerPoint. So, I had delivered a large file that I was unable to deliver by just uploading it into Moodle. But because I created a Word document that contained a link to it, which actually pointed to the actual document, which is in a shared folder, I was able to, do, to, to get over the hurdle, the seemingly unsurmountable hurdle, to deliver a larger file into a Moodle class for my instructor or other students. Now, in this upload assignment, it's confidential. Other students can't access it. But an assi another assignment might be that I'm supposed to post a link to that, pr to that uh, same uh, PowerPoint presentation as a link in a forum. And if I were going to do that, I would just add it in the, uh, the forum itself. So if I, if I came back in here, let's go in as uh, here again, we're Mickey. We'll come back here to the course. We will come to the chapter one forum. I'll get into it. I am going to add a new discussion. I'm going to say my test link. I'm going to use the advanced editor in case I need it. Uh, it's it's prompting me here. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to start that over again. Actually, I want to accept leave. It just redraws the page. Here is my actual post now. Um, my here is my presentation. 
and I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste and hit space and then I'm going to post to the forum and then I'm going to click on it and oh it's not clickable shoot it's not a it's not a link that's deliverable but if I click edit because I'm within my 30 minute window and I turn back on the advanced editor I highlight that link right click and copy it I come down here and click add a link I right click and I paste that I say open in a new window create the link save here it is it's a link directly within a forum posting that my my instructor and other students in the class can click on and because they all have U Providence accounts they can all click and look at it that's why it's important for you to understand the sharing settings and that you are only allowing people to view now you can use sharing and if you want to set up some like a, a, a group where you're supposed to work on a document together you could for those limited purposes share with individuals and you can contact the university service desk for more specifics on how to do edit sharing with somebody but so far as giving view sharing within a forum posting or within a file upload I've stepped you through the process so thanks very much for your attention feel free to contact me Jim Gretsch in the distance learning office if you have any questions or need any help and I hope that you have a very successful time um, taking online courses at the University of Providence